This is Mac Hands on One, and in this tutorial, we're going to be uh, continuing with the game we started in the previous tutorial, and uh, we're going to be adding a score feature to this, and we're going to make it randomize the button's new position every time they click on it to make the game a bit harder. So, in order to have a score, we have to have a label, and the label will have the text that says, you know, score colon, and then the score. So, we have to create an IB outlet, UI label, score label. And we also have to have an integer that keeps track of the score internally. So we're going to declare an int and we're going to call this score, not score label. Now I'll open up Interface Builder so that we can configure the label. Um, I'll just drag it in. We can say score, colon, zero, and then a bunch of spaces to give it to make it bigger for now. And let's outlet this as score label. All right, so we've got that done. I saved and quit. Now. In our uh, view controller, as you'll recall, button click is the code that gets called when they actually click on the button. So here we're going to add to score. Now we could say score equals score plus 50, and this would work fine. But in C and Objective C, there is a quicker way of doing this. You say score plus equals 50, and that just this is the same thing as this. This is a shorthand. Okay, so we're going to be using this, um, but that's just so you understand this. Uh, now, in order to set the text of the score label, we have to say score label, set text, and we need to give it a string. Now, we have a number, and we want to give it a, a string, a format that, that score colon, and then the score number. And so, Objective-C has, you know, the format feature um, that's common in C. Um, so, you can say score, and as you see, percent %D is a magic token and it replaces that with the number we specify after the comma. Very important to remember that. Now, um, this will essentially make the text of this label say score colon, and then the number that is their score. So, this is all we really have to do. I'm going to get rid of this alert because it'll just get on there and get in their way. Now, if we run it right now, as we will do, you can see when you click on the button, the score goes up. Wonderful. The thing is that I can just spam the button right here and, you know, follow it around slightly, you know, to some degree. So, what the problem with this, what we really want it to do is reappear somewhere else, respawn somewhere else on the screen, so that way they can't just keep on clicking. And, uh, as you'll recall, when the app opens, it, it, the button is just there. So, what we're going to do is create a new position for the button. Uh, using uh, basic math and a random number generator that's built into Objective-C. So, first of all, I'm going to turn you, uh, your attention to the number generator. So, we're going to be doing an NS log of a function called arc for random. Now, arc for random will give an output of a random integer. This integer goes from 0 to, you know, 2 billion, or it actually goes from negative, like, 2 billion to positive 2 billion, because it's an integer, it can be negative or positive, and about 2 billion is the maximum uh, for assigned integer. So, when you have um, this, basically, this is just a string, and percent %d just is a magic token, just as we did here, for a number. So, the number is going to be arc for random. It's an integer, to be specific. So, uh, this, whenever we click on the button, will print out a random number from negative 2 billion to positive 2 billion, as we can see right now. So there's a random number, completely random numbers. Some of them are negative, some of them are positive. Uh, yeah, we got a lot of negatives in a row. Um, that's pretty uncommon. Um, anyway, so we need to take this number and turn it from, like, from a really high number to something between 0 and 320,000. Or not 320,000, just 320, because that's the width of the iPhone screen. We want it to be, uh, the maximum to be the width of the iPhone screen, because that's the random number's range. So, if you'll recall, long division. When you divide a number by another number, if the number doesn't go evenly into the um, other number, there's going to be a remainder. That remainder will never be as um as high as the as the denominator, it can be one less than the denominator, but it'll never be the denominator or higher. 
and it can be zero if the number goes evenly in. So this is called a remainder, and in programming it's called the modulus. In order to get the modulus, you use the percent sign in a completely different way than the format. So if we want to get a random number, uh, random x, I'll call it, I'll say arc for random mod 320. And essentially this just divides the random number that comes out here by 320, takes the remainder, and plugs it in for this. Now this only really works for an integer, so keep that in mind, you can't use any other kind of data type, and we're going to see an error associated with this in, uh, in a couple of seconds. But first, we're going to log out random x, so you can see that it is a random number between uh, 0 and 320. Um, let's run it. And boom. Right there, you get your random numbers right in the console. And by the way, if you don't know when you run it, you can just click this little icon to get the console, or press Shift-Command-R. I know I've been doing that, and you probably have no clue what I'm doing. Um, but yeah. So that's how you get this console window. And NSLog just shows things in the console window. It's really helpful. So now that we know that this will be a random x, we can also create a random y axis uh, coordinate. So we'll use the modulus in mod 480. And I'll, um, I'll log out both of these. I'll have the x, comma, and then the y. And to do this, we can do random x. As you can see, it just takes multiple parameters and plugs this one into this and this one into this. So, that's quite simple. Now, let's say we want to put our button in this position. We can say cgrect button frame equals click me dot frame button frame dot origin dot x equals random x button frame dot origin dot y equals random y and click me dot frame equals button frame. <coughs> um, Alright, so this will make it in a random position. Now, I will have you recall that sometimes, if these numbers are too high, since we're moving the top left-hand corner of the button, sometimes it'll go off of the screen. And that'll cause a problem that you'll probably see in a second. Um, and then I'm going to show you how to correct that. So, it, it went into a random spot, and there you can see it went over the edge. And if we look at the x-coordinate, yeah, that's going to go over the edge, because it's pretty close to the edge, and yeah. So what it's doing now is it sees it, sees it hits the wall, so it flips its um, velocity, but then it sees it's still hitting the wall, so it flips it back, etc. So it causes a problem if it goes over the wall. So what we, what we actually want to do is make the limit equal to the right wall minus the width of the button. That way, the right of the button will never go over the wall. So we're going to say 320 minus, and I'm actually going to declare this up here um, for convenience. Minus button frame dot origin dot x. And here I'll do minus button frame uh, size dot height. Sorry, not dot origin dot x, dot size dot width. Okay. You can probably think, what am I doing? Alright, so this will uh, make the random number. Um, less than the width minus the width of the button, so that way the right of the button doesn't go over the side. Now, the issue with this is that this is a floating point. The width of a button can have a decimal point in it. It's not an integer. So when you subtract a non-integer from an integer, a floating point, or, you know, yeah. Like, when you do something like this, this will not be an integer. This will be a floating point, a number with a decimal point. As we recall, this only works with integers. So you're going to see an error when I run this, and I'll discuss what it means. So, invalid operands to binary modulus. Um, and basically that just means that one of these two things isn't the right kind of data. And we know it's this because this isn't an integer. So in order to turn something that's not an integer into an integer, you just do something called a cast. You add a left parenthesis, the data type you want it in, which is an int, and a right parenthesis, right next to the actual data, and it'll convert this data right there for you. So, there we go. It does that, and now it should run fine. And, let's see, we click it, random, 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 random. 
And, um, and it works, um, joyously. Now, I'll get rid of this NS log, because we don't need to debug that anymore, and we know it's correct. So, this has been, um, the tutorial on random, random numbers and random coordinates, and, you know, incrementing a number that's, uh, can be used as a score. So, thanks for watching, my kids are the one. Subscribe, and goodbye.